JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. It is a syntax for storing and exchanging data between two software applications or between the back end and the front end of a software application. The back end typically could have been coded in Java, Python, and .NET. The front end itself is usually written in HTML and JavaScript. JSON is very easy to consume in JavaScript because it is derived from the JavaScript standard. The easiest way to learn JSON format is by looking at a quick example. Here is a JavaScript variable to which a JSON string is assigned. A JSON string typically starts with a or it should start with a flower bracket and it ends with a flower bracket within which we can have different type of string value pairs separated by a colon. For example, the customer name is the string and then the value for it is Bharat. Similarly, the phone is the string and then the 911 is the value for it. The best way to see the different types of values that are supported is by going to the json.arg website. Once you go to json.arg, you see a beautiful explanation of what JSON is right on the home page. It can have any number of string value pairs. An object is comprised of a string value pair within flower brackets. The value itself, again, could be a string, a number, another object, an array, Boolean values like true and false and null. So these are all the values that are supported in JSON. And an array typically starts with a square bracket and it ends with a square bracket. Within it, we can have any number of values which are within double quotes. The name always should be in double quotes, although some parsers don't mind, but it is a good practice to have the names, all the names in double quotes. Here is an example for an array. The items that the customer has ordered are an array. As you can see, the laptop and watch are the elements of that array. Now, once we assign JSON to a JavaScript variable, it is very easy to retrieve all the values here in JavaScript object form. I simply say this variable customer order dot customer name and I will get the value Bharat. That's the beauty of JSON. Although it's very typical that we see JSON being used in front end or on the UI, it is catching up and a lot of Java applications, Python applications, they exchange JSON data as well, not just between our backend and front end. It can be used in between applications to replace XML in some places, especially in the mobile world. We don't directly convert or use JSON as string, like what I have shown you in the previous slide. We don't use it like this here. We typically convert our Java objects into JSON, which is called serialization. And even in JavaScript, we serialize JSON into JavaScript objects, and then we deserialize them when sending them to the server and the other way around. So there are JSON parsers, which are available in web browsers, as well as in every most of the programming languages today have JSON parsers, which can serialize and deserialize JSON into language objects and vice versa. I will show you those in action in the next few lectures. To summarize, JSON is a very simple lightweight data format that can be used to exchange data between software applications or within a software application between its backend and frontend. And there are parsers that can serialize and deserialize this data and the different values that are supported by JSON and the syntax for it is very simple. We have string and value. The value itself can be a string, number, object, array, so on and so forth. You can learn more on what types are supported by going to json.arc. In the next lecture, I will show you a hands-on example on how to create and use JSON.